In general, divide or choose is a real nice way to split up something between two parties. The problem comes up when there's more than two parties. We need to get a little more involved in our strategy to allow everyone to get at least a fair share in their own eyes. So the question we're going to ask is, how do more than two people divide things? And the process we're going to talk about in this video is one of several you can use. This process is called the lone divider. It's kind of the divider chooser edited to make it work for more than two people. So with the lone divider, the divider divides the stuff into in pieces. Everyone else places a value on each piece. Once this happens, one of two things may occur. The first thing that may occur is if it is possible to give each party a piece worth their fair share or more in the part in that person's view it's always based on how that person views the pot persons then do so. Last piece left over goes to the lone divider. But that's not always possible. Sometimes we have some contested pieces that everybody wants piece one because everybody believes piece one is worth more. Well, in that case, if it's not possible, give one of the non-contested pieces to the divider. Nobody else wants it. The divider says it's fair. And so the divider is happy with the divider's piece. And then we repeat the process with the remaining parties. So let's take a look at a few examples where we can use the lone divider method in order to divide up some stuff. Let's say a plot of land needs to be split between four parties. We'll call the parties A, B, C, and D for anonymity. Let's say D splits the land into four pieces. And let's look at A, B, C, and D's opinion about the four pieces, piece one, piece two, piece three, and piece four. 
that d has divided them into. Now, d has divided them how d views as fairly. So d thinks they're worth about a quarter, or 25% of the total values. But not everybody agrees with this. A believes piece 1 is only worth 15%. Piece 2 worth 30%, piece 3 is worth 20%, and piece 4 is worth 35%. B disagrees with both of them, and B thinks piece 1 is 30%, piece 2 is 35%, piece 3 is 10%, piece 4 is 25%. And of course, C has her own opinion, which is 20% for the first piece, 45% for the second piece, 20% for the third piece, and 15% for the fourth piece. OK, if this is the case, we'll look at the other parties. D was the divider. So we'll look at the other parties, A, B, and C, and ask which pieces of land would they be content with? Because everybody wants at least 25% of the property. So if we look at A, A wants a fair share of at least 25%. A would be content with either piece 2 or piece 4. Piece 2 or piece 4. B wants at least 25%. So B thinks a fair share would be at least piece 1 or piece 2 or piece 4. C. For C's fair share, C would be content, it looks like, only with piece 2. So is it possible to make everybody happy so that everybody gets a piece that is at least a fair share or a quarter of the plot of land's value? Well, in this case, it is possible. Notice if we give piece 2 to player C, Piece 2 is not available to the others anymore. But A would be content with piece 4. Piece 4 is no longer available. But B would be content with piece 1, which leaves behind for player D piece number 3. And so if we give piece 1 to player B, piece 2 to player C, piece 3 to player D, and piece 4 to player A, everyone will be happy because everyone got at least a fair share of 25% of the value. That is how the lone divider method works. That's really the best case scenario where everyone can end up with a piece they're happy with. It doesn't always work out as nicely as this. And so let's take a look at a case that might be a little bit more involved. Let's say four investors are dividing a portfolio worth $320,000. And again, we're going to make D is the divider. And so we split up the portfolio between A, B, C, and D. And they're going to split it into four pieces, piece 1, piece 2, piece 3, and piece 4. Well, again, because D is the divider, he's going to split that 320 grand into what B thinks is a fair share. So one fourth or a quarter of 320 is 80 grand. So D is going to put what they value as 80 grand into piece one, 80 grand into piece two, 80 grand into piece three, 80 grand into piece four. Well, based on these investments and how the different investors expect them to perform, the other investors might place different values on them. Maybe A thinks the first piece is worth 90, the second is worth 70, the third is worth 80, and the fourth is worth 80. B thinks the first is only worth 60, the second worth 70, the third worth 100, and the fourth worth 90. 
and C thinks they're worth 70, 50, 90, and 110. Well, OK. If D's the divider, we'll see what A, B, and C are content with and see if there's a way to divide this up fairly. Again, 80,000 is one fourth a fair share. So everyone wants at least 80,000. So player A would be content with piece one, piece three, or piece four. Player two, or B, B would be content with either piece three or piece four, because they both are worth more than $80,000 in B's mind. And C would be content with either piece three or piece four. And so who gets what piece? Well, it seems like everybody's interested in piece three and piece four. A is the only one that's interested in piece one. So let's go ahead and give piece one to A. B and C both want pieces three and four. They're kind of equally interested in both. But we do know that player D can take the uncontested piece two. Nobody seems interested in piece two. So we'll give that to D. So what do we do about 3 and 4? Well, B and C have some options. They could. Maybe they look at it and say, gee, B places more value on piece 3, and C places more value on piece 4. And so we could split them up that way, and B and C would be perfectly happy getting the best case in their view of the fair share division. Or maybe um, if it wasn't so pretty, or maybe they don't know how much value either each other place on the different investment portfolio divisions. So they could flip a coin to see who gets which piece. That would be a fair way. Or they could even say, hey, let's go back and do um, divider chooser. On the remaining investments. So in that case, uh, one of them decides they're the divider. One of them divides, decides they're the chooser. They pull the remaining money together and re-divide it out. And one person picks one piece, and the divider gets the remaining piece. And so there's some options they could do because there's two of them left and what to do with that. So that's one way where if it doesn't work out so pretty, we've got some options. But let's look at a third way where if it doesn't work out pretty, we still have some options available to us. Let's say we've got a plate of cookies. That our divider D divides into four piles. You know, if some of them are chocolate chip versus oatmeal raisin, they definitely have different values to different people. And so we've got A, B, C, and D. Pile one of cookies, pile two of cookies, pile three of cookies, and of course, pile four of cookies. And because D is the divider, D really believes that a quarter of the value, or 25%, rests in each pile because D is going to divide them as fairly as possible. But based on the type of cookie, A thinks 15% of the values in the first pile, 30% in the second, 20% in the third, and 35% in the fourth. 
B thinks 20% is in the first, 35% in the second, 10% in the third, and 35% in the fourth. And C says 20% in the first, 45% in the second, 20% in the third, and 15% in the fourth. Okay. D's are dividers, so we're going to see what A, B, and C want or would be content with. Since we're in percents, they want at least 25%. So A is interested in piles 2 and pile 4. B is interested in piles 2 and piles 4. And C is only interested in pile 2. But what you see is all of these piles are contested by another person. There's not a pile that only one person is interested in. So we really have no way to divide it up. So in this case, we say there is no simple settlement. So we turn to D. And D says, you can choose either pile 1 or pile 3. Nobody wants them. You say they're a fair chair, so choose one of them. D could pick either one of them. We don't know. So let's just say D chooses pile 3. Then the remaining cookies are combined and a new divider is chosen. Let's say they pick C to be the new divider. So in this case, we're going to have a new division of cookies that A, B, and C are going to have to choose between. And this time, we're going to divide into three piles, pile 1, pile 2, and pile 3. Because remember, D already has D's fair share. And because C is the divider, C is going to divide them evenly in C's eyes. So pile 1 is worth 33 and a third percent, pile 2, 33 and a third, pile 3, 33 and a third percent. But A and B see things differently. A thinks pile 1 is worth 40 percent, pile 2 is worth 30 percent, and pile 3 is worth 30 percent. B thinks pile 1 is worth 50%, pile 2 is worth 20%, and pile 3 is worth 30%. And since C was the divider, we're going to see if A and B can come up with something that they're content with and give C the remaining piece. Well, let's see what happens. This time, 33 and a third percent is a fair share. So A is content with piece 1. B is only content with piece 1, worth more than 33 and a third. And so again, we have no simple settlement, because there's no piece that only one person is interested in. So what will happen is our divider, C, will choose one of the uncontested pieces piece 2 or piece 3. Let's say C chooses piece 2 in this division. Then the remaining cookies are combined. And because now there's only two players left, A and B, they, A and B can use a simple divider chooser method. For the remaining cookies, A might split them into two piles. B picks the pile that B wants, and A gets the remaining piles. And at the end of this, everyone has at least a fair share of cookies. So 
One way we can handle the divider chooser method being extended to multiple parties, more than two parties, is to use this loan divider method. It's your turn to practice some of these loan divider problems where the divider divides into n pieces. Everyone places a value. And depending on if it's possible, we either divvy them up or the non-contested piece goes to the divider and we repeat the process with the remaining parties. Go ahead and try those. In the next video, we'll take a look at another way we can divide things fairly.